Now, the issue, the issue is this, and I, I'm going to give you a few scriptures about this, and I want you to take these scriptures and ponder what they have to say. It's actually always been available. You know, we say we're leaving the age of the church, we're entering the age of the kingdom, but the kingdom has always been here. It's always been in us. That's why when the scribes and disciples would come to Jesus, what is going to be the sign of the kingdom? I tell you the truth. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is at hand. It's as close as your next breath, as close as your next heartbeat. It's here. It's now. It's always been here, and it's always been now. So why haven't we accessed the power of the kingdom? And the reason is because to everything... There's a time and a season. We are actually living words. And the word does say we are living epistles to be read of all men. If we're living words, every word that lives in us, <laughs> in the beginning was the word. We just said that. So we are the gates. What does the word say then? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. How many gates do you know have heads? We have heads. So the word of the Lord is lift up, lift up, lift up your heads, lift up your eyes, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Let's look at Psalms 24, 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, uh, up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. We are the everlasting door. Now, let me just say, Jesus is the door. But he said, I'm, I'm going in advance. I'm opening a door that wherever I am, you may be also. Woohoo! <laughs> He's restoring us right now to our primordial position. And this is what's called transfiguration. If you haven't had the teaching on transfiguration, go to sons.global and get it. I've been preaching transfiguration for over 30 years now. And now, now, now is the time that the Lord is activating that in us. He's also giving us open access to tap into our immortality. I've been prophesying for the last three years. God is about ready to restore the dew of your youth. He's about ready to bring back longevity. He's about ready to restore our immortality. Whoa, whoa. Psalms 92 is a prophecy for today. It says, he will renew our strength like that of a wild ox. And we will be fresh and flourishing even in old age. Ho, ho! How many of you want to be fresh and flourishing even in old age? You'll be like the cedars of Lebanon. Whoa, ho! There you go, Scott. Cedars of Lebanon planted in the courts of God. You will be fresh and flourishing and full of sap even in your old age. That means what the Lord is doing, he's beginning to overcome decay. That means we no longer have to age. We know, in fact, I can tell you, thus saith the Lord, you're going to begin to feel younger, lighter, more vibrant, more full of life than you've ever felt before because this is the time, this is the day, this is the hour when the Lord is beginning the process of restoring our immortality. The word goes on in Psalms 92. This is a promise for a company... A company who are what? Planted in the courts. So if you want to uh, achieve this, you need to be planted in the courts. And the courts are in a totally different realm, which, by the way, is where you find the mysterion or the mystery of God is in another dimension. That's why ascension is so powerfully important. Yahweh is delivering us from the bondage to Egypt. This is an amazing thing. What that means in this age is he's now delivering us from the limitations of our humanity. 
We no longer have to be limited in our humanity. He's, uh, he's delivering us from the gravitational pull of the earth, which means we can all be caught up in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, bang, just like that, to stand face to face with him. He's also taking us into the limitless life of abundant, everybody say abundant. 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 <laughs> explosive. And when I say explosive, we're going to explode today. And by the time we get done with this session, whoa, you're going to be so full of light and life to a land, uh, into a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah? When these things begin to come to pass, look up, the Lord says, in Luke 21, your redemption draws nigh. What that means is when you look up, when you lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes, lift up your, lift up your heads and see your redemption from slavery and bondage to the Egypts of this earth is over. God is releasing us. Whoa, come on, let's go. Romans 8. For when you live controlled by the flesh, listen, when you live controlled by the flesh, you're about to die. But if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, we then taste abundant life. So long as we're controlled and manipulated by our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, and even the lack in our memory, so long as we're controlled by that, so long as we're governed by that, we're still subject to death. But when we take on our primordial position and put our spirit back in the governance over our soul in our body, we then taste abundant life. I love, ab don't you want abundant life? Unbelievers, 2 Corinthians 2, 16. The unbelievers smell a deadly stench that leads to death. But believers smell the life-giving aroma that leads to abundant life. And who of us can rise to this challenge? This is a question we're being answered today. Who of us can rise to the challenge of, uh, of tasting, of recognizing abundant, limitless, unending, flowing, life-giving, ooh, 1 Timothy 4.16, give careful attention to your spiritual life and every cherished truth you teach for living what you preach will then release even more abundant life. It'll release more abundant life inside of you and to all those who listen to you. Why do people change when they come to my conferences. It's because I'm not quoting the word. I'm living the word. Because I'm not just talking about the frequencies of heaven. I am a living frequency. Therefore, everything that I have, I can give away to the people. Whoa! So what? You can have more abundant life. It's all inside of you inside of you and to all those who listen to you. Whoa! -ho! All you have to do is have ears to hear. Isaiah 40. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is a, ver a, 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 a classic scripture for today. Because in this age, what the Lord is doing is he's beginning the final fulfillment of the book and the words of Isaiah. If you really, really want to know what the Lord's doing, go search out the book of Isaiah. He's begun already the restoration of, uh, uh, of devastated cities. He's begun already to renew our strength. You know, uh, when I, whenever... I speak, I'm not telling you these things because I want you to think I'm some highly anointed prophet of God. This is available for you all. I don't have one ounce of anointing more than anybody else in this room because we all have the same Yeshua living inside of us. 
So when the word says, if Jesus did it, we can do it. And not only what he did, but greater things than he did. Whoa, I didn't say that. He said it. So is he going to, is he going to tell us that we can do greater works than he did and not make a way for us to do it? Whoa, I can run and not be weary. I can walk and not faint. Hi, I'm Nancy. I just want to thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed what you heard, like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in lengthy, deeper teachings concerning the mysteries of God, contact us at sons.global and partner with us as we become co-workers and co-creators together with God for the establishment of His kingdom and His righteousness in all the earth.